Let's go! Razorback Nation, will this Arkansas pass defense actually be some kind of decent this season? I'm going to need your help because it has gotten a complete facelift. And in the background, you are seeing some good offense, but also some really bad defense from the Razorbacks. And it was a very Jekyll and Hyde season for them that featured a bunch of explosive passing plays such as this one. And look, this is some pretty good offense. CDB had inside leverage. They run a quick out route on first and 15, but you've got to be able to make the tackle. And the two players that missed the tackles on this play are no longer with the university. So can T. Will, the new defensive coordinator from UCF, fix what was a very horrendous year for the secondary. Now, there is some good news. Arkansas does return some players that came out and performed at a high level, and that includes former LSU DB Dwight McLaughlin, who you see in the background, get a first-quarter interception. Not his only one on the season. He had that big one versus Alabama to start the game earlier in the year. And look, this defense, you lose your best player, Drew Sanders. You lose uh, Terry Hampton and some other key role players. It's going to be very interesting to see what Arkansas can do next year. So I'm going to need your help in the comment section. And listen to this, Razorback fans. We have a live stream, just depending on when you're watching this, tomorrow, okay, Wednesday. we got my boy Jacob Davis joining us, and it is going to be an absolute fun evening we're giving out some Traylon Burks cards so we will see you there okay so obviously what I want to do is take a look at the numbers and see where I feel the Arkansas defense really needs improvement and Cliff Notes version uh, they, they need improvement everywhere let's get to it let's go so this means Barry Odom was just absolutely terrible and T. Will is going to come in and, and and fix everything for this Arkansas defense well, not entirely true. Once again, as many of you know, Arkansas defensively, they don't recruit the same caliber of player as some of the other um, elite schools do. But one thing I think is going to help T. Will compared to what Barry Odom had to go up against last year is the level of competition. Yes, the secondary wasn't the absolute best. I understand a lot of Arkansas fans want to say bye to Hudson Clark, but what you're seeing in the background is actually a play that I don't mind giving up. This was a five-star quarterback at Spencer Rattler throwing a really good back shoulder throw to an all SEC performer in Juice Williams, uh, uh, Juice Wells. You can make a case that that should have been offensive pass interference, and at least Hudson Clark didn't let anything happen after, right? But what was inexcusable were just the constant amount of just freebies, right? This right here is honestly really good offense. Good job by Bryce Young. You're getting some pressure. He does a good job stepping up. But on these deep throws, whoever the safety uh, or the safeties will be next year for Arkansas, you don't want this. There was just honestly too much of this, and honestly the receiver should not have fallen. Uh, he should have been able to run underneath that and just walk in for a tutty. But they went on ahead and, and scored a touchdown in this drive anyway. But just the blown coverages, as you guys know, um, earlier in the game, there was a slant that was taken to the house. You want to at least make the offense work for it, right? And look, this isn't the absolute worst defense. It was a third and seven, so you want to clamp down and try and force the punt, right? But honestly, you know, you got some good pressure right there from Drew Sanders. It's just, that's just way, way, way too easy. And even in some games where the defense was fine, um, there was just wide open guys running down the field. So, can Williams come in and make things just more difficult where you're not giving away free tutties such as this one? That's going to be the big question. So, let's take a look and see if this Arkansas secondary can do that very thing. Let's go. As you can see, 8.6 yards per pass attempt for the Arkansas pass defense last year. Boom! I'm looking at you. I know these numbers are about to really overwhelm you, so let's get some music going. Everybody say hi. <laughs> that was second to 
last, okay? Take a look at 2021. That number was a lot better. They were 7.8, almost a full yard per pass attempt better than what they were in 2022. And then you go to 2020, Arkansas, the first year under Barry Odom, 6.8 yards per pass attempt. So they consistently got worse. But what's very interesting is the total defense was also bad. So 2022, once again, these numbers are power five adjusted, 6.75. Then you look at 2021, 5.83, almost a full yard better. And then in 2020, it's basically the same thing, 5.65. So in pretty much every statistical category, yards per rush, Arkansas, once again, not great, 5.17. Then you go to 2021. Once again, these numbers are power five adjusted, 4.29. And then in 2020, you take a look and, well, once again, 4.62. They weren't the best defense stopping the run in 2020, but as you can see, there was just consistent regression. Now, let's actually do something interesting here. What about UCF? How are UCF's numbers? Because T. Will comes over from UCF, and you see, let's start with 2022. Um, you see right here, UCF was 75th in all of college football in a stat called total defense, right? Not too great, but then when you take a look at what they did in 2021, they were 23rd in yards per play. Now, what is very interesting about UCF, I kind of spoiled it right there, huh? Uh, uh. under T-Will's leadership, their pass defense last year was decent, 6.9, okay? And once again, these numbers aren't Power 5 adjusted. They're not a Power 5 team. But you look at 2021 under T-Will, they were the fourth-ranked pass defense in all of college football. Let me repeat. UCF, the fourth-ranked pass defense in all of college football. But where things get a little concerning, I know this is mostly a pass defense uh, film study here today, they couldn't stop the run at 4.53 yards per rush. That's obviously not that great. Um, and then you take a look at 2021, and bang. They were not good versus a run in 2021 either at 4.32. So you saw UCF... Really good pass defense, but not a great rush defense. And Arkansas overall was just bad on all three levels defensively, okay? So, will the Arkansas defense be better next year under the first-year defensive coordinator, Travis Williams? I'm going to give you one absolutely wild stat, but I want you to remember this matchup versus Texas A&M in the background. It is so important for Arkansas to stay ahead of the sticks, right? You... Make it second and 10. Yes, they pick up five-ish yards right there, but it was a tough five from a running back drafted in the third round. And then you see right here, you're going to need someone to step up and be a big-time pass rusher in the absence of Drew Sanders. A guy that really needs to step up next year who had a very good spring is Landon Jackson, another LSU transfer. But here, you just collapse his pocket so much and the secondary, look at the coverage across the way. There's absolutely nothing open, and you get a nice sack, okay? So, you know, getting good stops on first and second down, putting them in passing situations at third down is going to be huge. Now, one thing that was really interesting about that pass defense stat in year one for UCF is they lost not one, not two, but three NFL draft picks before Travis Williams even got. Can Travis Williams in year one do the same thing? Well, right now from Rivals.com, you see all the new faces and transfers, including the recent one from Western Kentucky. Lorando Johnson's a very interesting player from Baylor. So you get four transfers. You get some experienced players. Some of the guys you saw earlier that got beat in the secondary are no longer with this team. So essentially, Hudson Clark, uh, your, your your guy, a, a guy that's, I think, taken a little too much criticism. We all remember that Ole Miss game for 2020, but you also get uh, Dwight McLaughlin back, Quincy McAdoo. We hope he is able to bounce back from that accident. But overall, you bring back some experience with a lot of new blood. This secondary 
should be better. Now, do I think Travis Johnson is going to completely facelift this defense to year one? I don't know. You're going to need to be able to stop the run. And that was something that I saw consistently versus UCF. You know, part of the reason why, you know, against some good passing attacks, UF, uh, UCF didn't give up a whole lot of passing yardage is because, well, UCF couldn't stop the run first. And if you can't stop the run, they're just going to keep running the football down your throat. So, if you can at least contain the run and be able to play very soft coverage across the way, kind of like what Arkansas did here, guess what? Um, you should be able to have a decent defense. And the explosive plays, you saw it earlier uh, versus Alabama, you've got to stop the explosive plays. It just tore Arkansas's defense up all season long last year. So stopping the run on first down, controlling the line of scrimmage like they did on this snap right here goes an absolute long way. But you absolutely positively need some athletes to step up in that front seven. Um and look, there's some very super senior kind of guys on this team. A guy like, you know, Trajan Jeffcoat who we talked about on here, a sixth year player uh, from Missouri coming on over. You're going to need some of these older guys to take it to the next level because one thing this Arkansas defense might be next year is old, which is obviously good. You know, you're still in your prime athleticism of your career. Um, you're going to need those tank bookers, those kinds of transfers to come over and be big-time playmakers. Now, one final stat I'm going to give for you at the end of today's video. You're taking a look at at the 2022 schedule. And it's important to point out that last year, and I don't think I've ever seen this for any SEC team, Arkansas did not catch a break defensively. And this is where I'm going to defend um, Barry Odom here to a certain degree. A lot of teams at least have one bad FCS opponent or just one bad non-Power 5 team or just one bad SEC team on the schedule, Arkansas had zero last year. Um, every team that you see right here either had a draftable quarterback like BYU, a really powerful offense with some draftable receivers, and the reason why I'm playing the Texas A&M clip in the background, Texas A&M has five stars and draft picks all over the place. This very well could have been the worst offensive scheme, Jimbo Fishers, that they played all of last year. Even in the one weaker game versus Missouri State, you're going up against, well, Jimbo Fisher's replacement as a play caller, Bobby Petrino. There was no letting up at all last year on Arkansas' schedule. And one thing that you will see on the 2023 schedule is a lot of teams that have lost their quarterbacks, a lot of teams that have had some changes on the coaching staff, and just some games that you are for sure going to win, right? So last year, those just didn't exist. You know, you had a game versus Liberty where that guy who beat you is now a coach in the SEC. This schedule is going to be so much easier for Arkansas next year just in general, and that has nothing to do with T-Will, Barry Odom, Sam Pittman, or anything. You just get a little bit of a better draw defensively to where you don't have to just outscore people with K.J. Jefferson. So, um, obviously, th this was arguably their best defensive performance on the season versus, you know, Texas A&M. Obviously, the LSU game was really good as well. But um, it's, it's, it's going to take a lot, but at least you're going to have a little bit of an easier time um, with not a murderer's row on the schedule. So comment down below your thoughts on today's film study and in just a second floating in your face. If you missed it, we will have that wonderful Rocket Sanders study for you to check out. Now, don't forget the live stream Wednesday night. We're going to test it out, see if you guys want to do more of that kind of stuff, okay? It is power hour. SEC, bam! And tonight, we are doing oh, some barbecue chicken. Let's go.